bit, we're going to do a DIY demo with Valerie McKeon, and she's an Etsy standout. You have to check out her shop, Lillian Val. Um, and her work has been featured in magazines and websites from Good Housekeeping to realsimple.com. She now has a book out um, called The Complete Book of Chalk Lettering. And we just want to welcome her today. And thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you here. Hey. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah good, to, see, good to be here. <laughs> you can see her chalkboard behind her. So um, we're going to have her in, in um, about 15 minutes. We're going to have her show us a few tricks and flourishes to create gorgeous hand-drawn chalk designs. Um, but before we begin that, um, we have some viewer questions. So Valerie, let's um, see what our viewers have to say and some of the questions they have about your technique and, and your artistry. Awesome. Um, <laughs> so um, someone says here, Sandra says, where do you get your ideas? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I, I feel like my ideas come from really random things. Uh, and it's usually when I'm not even looking for an idea. I, I find that when I travel a lot, especially, I don't know, there's something about being removed from the studio that, mm -hmm. I don't know, I get more ideas when I'm just out and about. Um, yeah. You know, artwork at restaurants have inspired me and patterns right. on, you know, a dress. There's, uh, but it's normally outside the studio when I'm doing something. If I'm actively looking for ideas, I usually mm -hmm. don't find ones that I love, so. Mm -hmm. I'm sure when you go to restaurants and bars and stores, you see different signs at shops and it kind of like, you know, reignites the creativity. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially the, you know, sort of turn of the century style signs that are mm -hmm. modern again. Um, yeah. And I, I just I love that seeing some of the vintage flourishing and, and everything. Right. It's, it's really inspiring. Excellent. Um, now, B has a, a question. I love this one. I have bad handwriting. Can I learn to create beautiful lettering and how do I get started? Also a great question. Yes. So bad hand, handwriting is not a problem at all with, with chalk art, which is why I love it so much. Right. I, my handwriting is not great, honestly. <laughs> um, it's gotten better, but it's, it's really nothing, nothing special. And the great part about chalk art, when you think about it, mm -hmm. is to think of it as drawing instead of writing. So mm -hmm. in, you know, traditional calligraphy, you, you know, you rely on those really nice, smooth strokes that carry through the whole piece. Mm -hmm. Uh, with chalk art, you can draw just a tiny little piece. And then you go back over it and, and you draw it and that's how the letters develop. So it's definitely more about drawing than writing. Um, but, you know, I always say, and, and in, as part of the demonstration too, I'll, I'll be able to show that how you sort of just get a skeleton out and, and you draw it and then you go back over it and you mm -hmm. can manipulate it and change it and, and have it develop any way you want. And that's really, you know, one of the, the best parts about it is how forgiving it is. So yeah. even if you, you know, mess up, it, it erases. So there's no pressure at all to, you know, to try things out and, and to practice. So yeah, no, no good handwriting is necessary. <laughs> awesome. That's good to know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have another question. Why did you choose chalk as a medium? Was there anything that you ever went with before chalk or was it always, you know, a love at first sight with chalk drawing? Yeah, you know, I, I think that I started right when chalkboards became sort of a trendy thing. And I, I really, when I started doing chalk art, it wasn't for a business. It, it right. was purely for myself. It was for a hobby. And I just legitimately wanted a chalkboard in my kitchen, uh, yeah. which is, is kind of cool that it developed out of a true um, desire for that. So, yeah, I, I made this chalkboard for my kitchen, and that's, that's how I, I got started in it. And I, I really did love it. There was something really cool, again, about the, uh, the way that it could erase. And, oh, I can have this piece of decor in my kitchen that I can change as much as I want and change it for the season. And it's really fun to draw. Yeah. So I think I was really attracted to it for that. And, you know, just the look of it. It's, it's rustic, but it can right. be 
um, just very modern and, and elegant too. So I like the versatility of it. Mm -hmm. Excellent answer. Um, Nicole wants to know, uh, whose artwork do you really love? Any inspirations that you can think of? Oh, wow. I, there are so many artists that I love. Um, there's a hand lettering artist. Um, you can look her up on Instagram. Her name is Amanda Arneal. Oh, awesome. And she does beautiful brush lettering, um, which is, is just so, it's so fantastic. And she posts a lot of time lapse videos and, and things on her Instagram. So I love that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, other, there's, um, actually, this is sort of out of the realm of, of what I do, but I, I love her work, and that's Holly Nichols. She's a fashion designer, and she does a lot of um, artwork with uh, Copic pens, and mm -hmm. they're, it's, it's just fantastic. So, yeah, I, I think those two stand out to me. Um, there's another artist on Etsy. Her, her shop is called Lucille's Kitchen. And she okay. does these gorgeous recipe illustrations too, which I mm -hmm. I love that. I, I personally love doing recipe illustrations and yeah. she has just the most beautiful ones. Excellent. I'll have to check all of them out now. I want to go on Etsy right yeah. now. And them all. <laughs> you'll you'll get lost on Instagram. <laughs> like, oh, where did that hour go? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Um, Emily wants to know where did the name Lillian Val come from? Oh yes. <laughs> uh, so Lily is is really a nod to my mom, and oh, we nice. both share a love of flowers. And you know, when back years ago, we we thought, oh, we're gonna open up a cupcake shop. I don't know, I don't know why. It was just one of those things, and we were going to name it Stargazers because of Stargazer lilies. Yeah. And so adding that in is sort of just this this nod to her. And um, I just, I like the, the ring of it, too. I, I like the and <laughs> name and a brand name. So part of it was, uh, was that, too. <laughs> yeah. It's short and sweet. It's nice. Yeah, right. I like the L and V. Right, <laughs> that's, exactly. that's nice when I shorten it. <laughs> Emily has another question. Um, she says, what was your coolest commercial commission? Oh, got? so... I had uh, I had the opportunity and the privilege to do two chalkboards now for Starbucks, uh -huh. and that those two were it was so much fun. The first one was a Valentine's Day chalkboard, and it was a wall, and it was inviting people, you know, to do a Starbucks date. So it was the it was these two uh, Starbucks cups, and um, that was really cool. And we did a whole time lapse time lapse of it and Starbucks posted it to their page. Mm -hmm. And then just this past fall, actually, well, um, it's still fall, it's not, not this past fall, but <laughs> know, right? the first day of fall, um, <laughs> I know it is, I'm seeing Christmas stuff pop up everywhere. Um, but anyway, so the first day of fall, I did another time lapse video that was this hello fall design uh, with some colored chalk and some fall leaves. And that was also really fun. So it was just, Awesome. It was exciting to do that, and yeah. then it's exciting to see it posted on, you know, Starbucks page, and that's that was exciting. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> do you have any tips for people who want to? This is from me. I just thought of this. Any people who have yeah. an Etsy shop and really want to like utilize it the most, kind of market it and like get it out there and get on social media. Like, what was like your whole process? How did you kind of, you know? Get yourself out there because you're getting a lot of recognition it's super exciting so i'm sure a lot of etsy sellers would want to hear some of your tips <laughs> yeah sure so i i firmly believe in first of all having a good brand i, I yes. feel like the brand and your product are equally as important um mm -hmm. my background is in marketing so awesome. I think from the very beginning, I was always very brand minded. Yeah. How can I, you know, create a vibe in the shop and um, from mm -hmm. the, the marketing materials to packaging materials to the Etsy banner to the language mm -hmm. in the shop? Everything is very, very purposeful. Yeah. And I think that that that's such a huge thing for for an Etsy seller to really mm -hmm. determine, OK, what what brand? What am I trying to convey is, uh, you know, um, maybe listing out even just some adjectives that you want to describe yeah. the, the vibe of your business. Right. If it was a personality, 
Mm -hmm. And I, I think that that brand is really important because Etsy is very saturated, as everybody yes. knows. Um, it, there's tons of stuff. There's tons of people doing the same things on yeah. Etsy. So to really stand out, I, I firmly believe that, you know, having the, a good brand is part of that. Mm -hmm. And then that perpetuates itself because yeah. the hope is that when somebody when a customer buys something from an Etsy store and their friends are saying oh where where did you get this you know this is so cute the hope is that they say I got it from your shop yeah is, as opposed to saying I got this on Etsy which is just very you know generic so exactly. the way to get that is to have that really strong brand presence so that yeah. people can feel connected to your business and what you're trying to do through through the brand and yeah. I I just I can go on and on about that like yeah. I said it's my background um, right so I, I think that that's equally as important as having a, a really great product is just having a brand that people will be proud to share on oh, on social remember. media and yeah. proud to say yeah exactly remember and say i got it from here and i want to share that excellent that's awesome advice um evan has an interesting Great. question about some other mediums chalk type mediums um he says what do you think of those chalkboard paints that will turn any paintable surface into a chalkboard and do you have any fun ideas where they can be used Oh, wow. See, I would probably make, I would paint anything in chalkboard paint. <laughs> I was into it. Um, yeah. Yeah. They, uh, yeah, th those paints are really cool. Yeah, to turn things into oh, yeah. chalkboards. I mean, I've seen any search on Pinterest, you know, there's such mm -hmm. cool things. Like, I love the chalkboard um, paint platters people yeah, are doing, are like awesome. almost like a cheese board. Yeah, yep. so cute. I've seen people do a chalkboard on the fronts of like dressers. Oh, I think that's, that's, that's awesome. That's yeah. Really, yeah, that's really neat. And I, I actually have a chalkboard desk that mm -hmm. the whole top of my desk is just a chalkboard. So, yeah, I'm. I, I think there's endless possibilities. Endless possibilities. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. just beyond a sign, just things that you can do. Uh, painting, I've seen like even wine bottles, kind of recycling thing to uh, paint a wine bottle yeah. with chalkboard paint and have that be a really cute centerpiece. Mm -hmm. Seen people do that for weddings too and just even yeah. write on the number for a table number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just chalkboards are awesome. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> chalkboards are for everyone. We love them. Yeah. So much fun. They're I like everything. the um, yeah. like the kind of mason jar ones with the chalkboard you can like if you want to like put pickles in there or like whatever you want you could change what it says yeah how up. cute is that so fun. yeah definitely awesome um he has a question do you ever use chalk markers and are those safe um if you're living with someone with respiratory allergies interesting question oh yes that is so i will say if you're using regular chalk um, yeah. which I do, there will be a lot of dust produced. Dust. Yes. Um, so if there are some respiratory issues, I would definitely um, be, you know, be aware of that. I like to, um, I like to recommend Crayola anti-dust chalk, oh, but okay. it, don't let the name fool you. <laughs> it's, it's certainly <laughs> still dusty. Um, so a chalk marker would be a great alternative. I actually just learned about a new product as well. Mm -hmm. And I, I tried it for the first time and it's called Butter Sticks. It's by wow. a company called Jack Jack Bird, but it's J-A-Q, J-A-Q. And they have um, dustless chalk that is truly dustless. It oh. feels like a crayon, which I, I think is the next best thing because the chalk marker is going to give a really flat appearance. Yeah. You won't, it won't have that nice texture, um, but the Butter Sticks, they will still give a texture, but they truly are dust free. It's it's like using a crayon on the chalkboard. So mm -hmm. that's that's something to look look into as well. And I know they are available online. Oh, I never knew they made dustless. Well, dustless as much as they possibly can. That's awesome. So yeah. now we know if you yeah. have a sensitivity to it, you can absolutely use something as an alternative. Um, so we have one yeah. last question before the demo. Um, Susan wants to know, what is your artistic process in general? Do you kind of sketch okay. first? Does it all come out at once? I What's do. Like? I, 
I usually sketch everything and mm -hmm. even if I mean it's if I would show my sketches you know people would probably be like how do you even know what that is and it's normally just scribbles but it helps me just get it out there and know sort of the main concept so chalk art definitely takes some planning and that's yeah. because of since it can bump so easily yeah exactly um yeah, it's a blessing and a curse because you can, you know, erase away any any mess ups, but then it takes a level of planning because you don't want to mess up things. So you sort of have to start from the top down, which I, I find to be easier. Mm -hmm. But because of that, it does require a level of planning. So I, I do like to sketch out, even if it's just really quick and rough and um, and then you know, sort of let it develop as it goes. I, I right. think that, you know, a lot of times as much planning as, as you have, sometimes you get it onto the board and it just is not looking right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'll take a step back and that's uh -huh. a great tip too for, for people that are drawing on a chalkboard. Yeah. Take a step back or take a photo of it with your smartphone. I do that all the time because when you're looking at something this big, there are glaring issues that that will come <laughs> yeah. out from that and then you can adjust it or or balance it out so i will do a, a combination of all of those things when i draw something and i'm constantly tweaking and editing and mm -hmm. um and, and that's part of the forgiving nature of it too i you know i by no means can just you know draw it right. draw it out and the first try or the first, you know, go is, is what I go with. It's it's a process in, yeah. in that I'm erasing and, and adjusting. Yeah. Always fine tuning. Um, exactly. So thank you, viewers, for the questions. So yes, that was awesome. That was awesome and great answers. So without further ado, Valerie will start um, the demo portion of the chat and I'm going to disappear from the screen like magically. So take it away, Valerie. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So yeah. um, what I plan to to show on, on the chalkboard is probably my favorite banner to do, which is a wave banner, and um, just some lettering within the banner, too. So I'm going to take off my headphones and try to project so, so you can hear me. All right. Um, Probably the best tip that I can give is to sharpen your chalk. So I always start with um, some really nice chalk. Um, sometimes the surface or the, the tip will break um, if you get a little bit of a heavy pressure. So as I'm sketching it out, you kind of have a light pressure. Um, so to go to the chalkboard, I'm just gonna do, like I mentioned, about just getting that skeleton out um, and and starting the banner out here. Let me make sure I'm in the frame. <laughs> so the banner starts just with a sort of this S shape. And then I match that at the bottom. And you want to try to make sure that this distance is equal when you, when you draw the banner. Okay, so at this point, you want to connect your two, two sides. And you notice these two points that are sort of curved, curved in. We're going to take those sides and make them into the tails of, of the banner. When this is the body of our banner, we'll, we're, where we'll put some text in there. So the look of the wave banner is, is one that it's almost like a ribbon that's folding in on, on itself and then folding out into the tail. So pull this fold. In, and then you want to loop it back around like so. We'll do that on the other side. Like that. 
Then to close in those, those loops, just add lines there. And then this portion is your tail. So you want to sort of judge, and this is by no means meant to be perfect. It's all about, um, I, I like the imperfection of it, but trying to make it as close to as wide as possible for the tails. So just add another line and then closing that with a cutout triangle shape to close off the tail. And do the same thing on the other side. So this is really the, the skeleton shape of the banner. And I love to add shading to the banner. So it's really exciting to sort of see how it comes alive when you add the shading. So since the portions here are turned in, um, we want to give that a nice shading so that it looks like it has dimension to it. And I like to use some just diagonal straight lines in that space. And the same thing with the bottom. So the other place where we can add some really nice shading is onto the tails. So Again, we want to make this body look like it's sort of sitting forward and the tails are pushed a little bit back. So this is this is a really fun part of Chalk R2 where you want to get dusty and use your fingers and make a lot of, of smudges. So I'm just going to scribble out some dust onto the board because I, I want some, some dust to work with. Then I just take that and smudge it out. The concept of smudging dust is, is really the main, main thing about chalk art, um, because since we're working with black and white especially, you get those really nice tones when you can shade it and make areas lighter, make areas more vibrant. And this is also the part where you can tweak like crazy to get the, the shadow as, as deep as you'd like, as vibrant or as subtle. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And I'm also going to add shading to the two ends of the body of the banner because they're meant to look like they're curved. So this time when I add some dust, I'm going to add it like it's curved. And then again, just smudge it out.
Hey. So in the process of adding the shading, I've definitely bumped a lot of a lot of these outlines. So we'll, we will go back through and polish that. Uh, but before that, I want to get some words into the banner um, because we do run the risk of still smudging what we've done. So the end is when I'll go through and polish it. Um, but for right now, I'm going to add a word into the banner. And I think welcome is, is nice and and versatile for, for a banner, for, um, you know, home decor or an event to say welcome. So to add the word, um, I'm just going to go in. And this, again, is just the skeleton of the word, just to get it out there, and then I can go back and tweak. Okay, so now to get that really nice look of calligraphy with a chalk script, I'm just going to go back and thicken the downstrokes of the letters by making multiple passes with my chalk. I'm also using a heavy pressure here so that the chalk becomes really vibrant, the lettering becomes vibrant against the banner. Another thing to mention is that as your chalk starts to dull down, uh, you might want to give it a couple turns in a, just a pencil sharpener with two holes. I actually have a, a paper plate sitting over here so I can sharpen, sharpen into that and get a nice point. So as you can notice, the letters are really developing by a lot of passes. So it, it takes time uh, to do chalk lettering for that reason. Uh, we're not just making one swoop. Every stroke has to be drawn on there.
Okay, now that my word is in place, I can go back and, and sharpen up the banner with, with a high pressure along the edges. And you'll see those edges just really pop against the shading that I did. All right, and that is a a chalk banner uh, with a with a nice script in it. I I think that this is really versatile. I love the shape of a banner, especially with the with the wave. So um, yeah, that that is the tutorial. All right, thank you all. Thank you for joining me.